and electricity in this building. We take what we want. Click. Oh! Click. Welcome to OVW. Look up. Oh! oh! Curtis, face first in the exposed turnbuckle. Oh, nobody help. Gun runs himself into that turnbuckle. Feeling back in his fingers. Wait oh. a minute. What the hell? What's this? Real one's out here. What's he doing? What does he have on his hand? Oh! oh! Real one just dropped gun. Was, it, was that a belt? He that was a belt. It wasn't the OVW heavyweight belt. What the hell? Referee's still trying to get that turnbuckle pad back on after the damage is already done. But the Luke just did. He just lowered the knee pad. Luke! Luke just hit the certifier. We got, we got a new champion. He did it. We got a new champion. Your winner. I'll tell you one thing though, we are now absolutely in the certified era of OVW. Today, Cal, the first ever OVW Country Boy Brewing Media Champion, looking to face off. You know, you talk about Cal's pals. You know, Dustin Jackson and Cal Hero, no strangers to each other. Yeah, after the night, but Josh, huge opportunity for Dustin tonight. A man who's been struggling to find his footing here in OVW finds himself in there against the Country Boy Brewing OVW Media Champion. Such a huge opportunity, and Josh, a wild night for a wild bit of uh, weather here in Louisville. We got tornadoes, we got thunderstorms. But I feel like we're going to see some flurries here tonight. Yeah, some flurries of punches, and once again, a show of sportsmanship. You know, for, from these two former tag team partners, and, and Dustin Jackson understands how much a win over Cal Hero here could rocket him right back up the the standings in OVW. But Cal, you know, he understands too that whether or not you're my friend. I want to win. I've got to win. Well, Josh, you've said it a million times. You hit your friends a little bit harder. Yeah. Cal Hero getting shoved out of that side headlock. Justin Jackson goes for a big right hand. Nothing there. Woo! Cal managed to duck under both of those. If DJ had landed either of those right hands, this one could have been over. But Hero now not willing to let Justin Jackson get too much of a breather. 
Oh! That vertical leap out of Dustin. That's something Michelangelo would have painted on the ceiling. Beautiful drop kick there. Cal Hero taking all of it and now in the corner in trouble is the OVW Media Champion. Ooh. Chops right across the chest and now DJ sends Cal across, but Cal up and over. Oh! Thudding chop of his own there. Cal Hero giving as good as it gets. Cal asking the crowd if they want one more. Dustin trying to get away from that corner, but Cal follows him to the other one. No rest for the oh, wicked oh, as there's a oh, chop oh. across the chest. Now you mentioned a history between these two, Josh, but you gotta think Cal Hero, he's not the same man Dustin Jackson wants to do. He's not the same man who walked into Davis Arena all those years ago. Cal Hero has grown. He has evolved here in OBW. That he has, and you see that reversal there. He just slides on through. Dustin throws the strike. Oh, oh high oh, angle oh. German suplex. Cal Hero, not really a German suplex kind of guy, but pulling things out of the tool shed here tonight. Well, you know, and that's the thing. When you know somebody as well as these two have known each other, other, you, you understand what the other's capable of. So you want to pop something out every now and then that's going to shock and ooh, surprise your opponent. Makes sense, Josh. It, you know, if your opponent likes, if opponent knows you like to tango, maybe cha cha a little bit, throw them off their game. Cal here, look at that. Ghost roll of Dustin Jackson up and over. <laughs> and Cal with chops across the chest of Dustin. Not wanting to give Dustin an inch here. Dustin sets his weight. Hang on. Blocks that. Oh. Bulldog out of Cal Hero. Looked like Dustin was going for something there, but Cal just was able to shift his weight enough there and land that Bulldog flush. Yeah, he blocked that hip toss, and then it looked like DJ was going for a back suplex, but now Cal, those left hands, looking for a little bit of that flip, flop, and fly, daddy. Oh, hold on. Oh, a little extra stink on that one. A little lamby off for those in Cajun country. On well, Cal with that wrist clutched, and now we've seen this, both arms. Oh, hold on. What has Cal got in that's my that, Oh! That's that fanny dropper shades of Shane Helms there. Cal Hero paying homage. Copy that. Dustin Jackson down and out. I mean, that could have been it right there, but Cal setting up Dustin Jackson. Giving up the band, Josh. Is that fanny pack knee, that FPK? That's it. Your winner of this match, Cal Hero! Cal Hero picking up the victory here in the opening match of OVW Rise. What a way to kick off OVW Rise, folks, but that is just the beginning. Here tonight, Josh, I'm almost a little ashamed to say it, but Beaches and Creek will be having a funeral service for the team, the, 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 the careers, of the Golden Lions. I don't know what those two idiots think that they have in mind, but let's not work, let's not think, talk about that. Let's talk about Jack Vaughn and Shane Mercer hooking it up in your hour one main event of OVW Rise. I sincerely hope we have reinforced everything in this arena because that will be a kaiju battle. I know, I know Godzilla versus King Kong just came out, but we got that here tonight. Jack Vaughn versus Shane Mercer main event, folks. So much more OVW Rise on the way. Do not go anywhere. Seems good there. Any headaches at all? You took a huge shot to the head. I, honestly, Doc, I, I haven't felt this good in like two and a half years. Like, it feels like there's electricity pulsing through my veins right now. I, I feel like I could run a 10 second mile. I, I feel like I could lift a car right now, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna go lift a car. ZDP, I, are you sure? ZDP? I, I, I'm, I, my name is Zachary D. Pittman, and I'm absolutely Wait, positive. But it's CDP. Ninety percent of natural sleep aids don't work. Most remedies make bold claims, but never measure their real impact. Meet Sophie, the natural plant-based spray that does. Sophie isn't one size fits all. It experiments with different plant extracts to find what works for you. Paired with an app and machine learning, Sophie learns to optimize your sleep because not all plants work the same for everyone. Sophie is as unique as you. 
And now, the Wix Pizza Rewind. You see that trying to get fe feeling back in his fingers? Wait oh, a huh. minute! What the hell? What's this? Real ones out here! What's he doing? What does he have on his hand? Oh! oh. Real one just dropped gun. Was, it, was that a belt? He that was a belt. It wasn't the OVW heavyweight belt. It was a... Oh! I want to keep his pants up. I think he's hit That with was the Wix Pizza Rewind. Wix Pizza on Baxter Avenue and Hikes Lane in Louisville. Pennyworth, what are you doing here? Look, I'm glad you showed up, but this is a dangerous place. Someone like you could get really hurt. Anyways, you got to keep it a secret. You're not allowed to tell anybody. Pennyworth, my identity. My loved ones can get hurt. Keep it a secret. If you need me, shine the signal. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from right here in the middle, the Beat Mo Beast, Big Zoe! Big Zoe getting a hell of an ovation from the OVW faithful here. And the man that was my wrecking machine in the LOB for years and years going through that war not that long ago with Shane Mercer, that best of seven series. Coming out just dripping intensity. Big Zo ready for a fight here tonight, Josh. You know, and I think that's what that best of seven series against Mercer did. It brought out the best in Zo. And his opponent, accompanied to the ring by Gitari. From Huntington Beach, California, he is the most successful man in pro wrestling. Carson Drake! You know, Brian, you said that uh, Zoe came out here dripping with intensity. Carson Drake walks out here every week dripping with douchebaggery. Is that, is that an accurate statement? Yeah, no, oozing with scum, absolutely. Flanked by Ari Alexander, new haircut, same old douchey boyfriend, Carson Drake. But Carson Drake and Big Zoe, a little bit of miscommunication last week in that six-man tag. We're on the same team, Josh, and we saw Carson Drake clock Big Zoe. Yeah, and making Big Zoe mad is not something that you want to do. So when Zoski gets really, really angry, he, he's almost unstoppable. He's like a juggernaut in that ring. Once he gets rolling, it's all but over. Right now, that juggernaut is going to go one-on-one -on -one with wrestling's most successful man, Carson Drake. By what standard? His own. I highly doubt that statement is accurate. Well, he was... Wait, Carson Drake. Oh, look at that. I think he was looking to pay Big Zoe off, but I think Zoe would rather get the winner's pay purse. I mean, yeah, Zoe will take your money and then beat you up and take the winner's purse. Right. That's what he does, but Drake puts that boot up right into the mouth of Zoe. Ooh, big chop it. Big Zoe almost unfazed. Oh, my God. Yeah, chopping Zoe is not something you want to do. There would be times that Cash would just start lighting up the guys in the LOB locker room think, just for fun. Oh! I think Big Zoe just blasted some of the sleeves out of Carson Drake there. That's impossible. Wow. Look oh. at the strength of Zoe. Zoe is in a bad mood here tonight, Josh. I, that's what I was saying, man. You don't want to make Zoe mad, and that's exactly what Carson Drake did. Oh. You see that are you serious leg drop right across the throat. Well, they had that big six-man tag last week, and I think Big Zoe wanted to pick up that win in such a high-stakes situation, and he feels like Carson Drake kind of cost him that match, and especially after that strike. So paying a little tribute to his step-team days, and look at this, the acrobatics out of Zoe. This man is so athletic. A man that size shouldn't move like no, that. No, not even remotely. The laws of physics. This, uh, don't equate for that, but Big Zell somehow finding a way to do it. <laughs> it chops Carson Drake down. So yeah. remind everybody, you know what time it is. Big Zell now taking his time, enjoying this beatdown. Oh, hold on. So going for that Zell bomb. Oh, corkscrew Zell bomb. Drake moved out of the way. Zoe rarely breaks that out, but it may have cost him this time. I don't know. That's corkscrew might have screwed Zoe here. We're gonna, oh, oh Car Carson Drake throwing the sweater now. A cheap shot. 
And a stroke right here, middle of the ring, face first, though, down. Oh, come on. Your winner of this match, Carson Drake. Carson Drake picking up the victory here over Zoe. All right, Alexander, you have to try to congratulate Carson. Carson, then hold on. What the hell is going on here? So Carson, that close fist shot right in front of the referee, Josh. But it all happened so fast, and then Carson Drake able to pull off that stroke. Can you all give me a second? Ari, Ari, I haven't been this nervous in a very long time. I've, I've been thinking about this for a while. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I have something I want to tell you. Got some dirt on my shoe. I was using you! April Fools, right? April Fools? There ain't no April Fools about this. You think that when I was done with Ryan, I wasn't gonna be done with you? At least Shalance had the common sense not to bring her simple ass here. You, you said you love me. I, you... <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I lied to you. I got exactly everything I needed from you. Let me ask you a real important question. Do these boots say it's us or do these boots say it's me? <laughs> but hey, garbage. We can still be friends. As long as there's benefits. What's up, dork? Where's catering at? Um, food. Where's the food at, fatty, fatty, no friends? Fatty, no huh? Friends. Did you not hear me the first time? Hey! Stop bullying my friend! <laughs> it doesn't have any friends. He may not have any friends, but I have a friend. Oh, yeah. And he eats bullies like you for breakfast. Like me? Yeah. Cool, find out. Send him to the ring. No need to fear! Super Z is here! <laughs> What the hell was that? If you've ever dreamed of being part of professional wrestling or sports entertainment, make that dream a reality and attend the world-famous Harvard of Pro Wrestling, the OVW Academy with Al Snow, the birthplace of legends including Batista, John Cena, Randy Orton, The Miz, and many more. Will you be the next name added to that impressive list? Visit OVWAcademy.com and apply now. Out on the frontier, where loyalty is hard to come by, a double cross can leave you staring down the barrel of a six-shooter. In a land where every handshake hides a secret agenda, trust is a luxury few can afford. And I know you're the dirty dog that double-crossed me. OVW presents Double Crossed. Live on pay-per-view Thursday, May 2nd. Order now at ovwrestling.com. And now, the Wix Pizza Rewind. You see that trying to get fe feeling back in his fingers. Wait oh, a minute. Hold. What the hell? What's this? Real one's out here. What's he doing? What does he have on his hand? Oh! oh. Real one just dropped gun. Was, it, was that a belt? He just that was a belt. It wasn't the OVW heavyweight belt. It was a... Oh! I think, I think he keeps his pants up. I think he 
three is hit. That the- was the Wix Pizza Rewind. Wix Pizza on Baxter Avenue and Hikes Lane in Louisville. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Cincinnati, Ohio, Dalton McKenzie. Dalton McKenzie, he's just come out here and he's been bullying people for the last few weeks. And look at this guy. He looks like he would bully you. Is he stuck in the 80s? What's with the jean jacket? And that's not a shot against TW3 in the 80s, baby. opponent from parts unknown super z S- super z super in z you know what's screw it i'm super into it super z standing up for the little guy I mean, i'm not mad about it at all Dalton mckenzie he might have bit off more than he could chew here with super z but Dalton mckenzie looks like he's taking this a little lightly Don McKenzie laughing. That might be a mistake because Super Z looks awful fired up in Davis Arena. Well, it wasn't before. This crowd chanting Super Z will get him there. Looks like OVW's new resident superhero is a big hit with the OVW fans. I'm. I'm surprisingly good with this. I'm excited to see how this plays out. I just want to know where I can get a Super Z shirt and PJs. You would have PJs. Like, you get the footy ones. It's almost winter, yeah. It's not almost winter, it's April. Zero percent chance he's winning this battle. Look at this, Super Z. I'm awestruck. Oh, <laughs> Super Z catching Dalton McKenzie off guard and lighting him up with that punch. Super Z with a super P for punch. Yeah. But ZDP, look, here's the thing though, Josh. I think this is my. He's. We saw oh him. Oh my. As- God. Super Z, Josh, just got tossed across the ring. If he can't fly, Dalton McKenzie just made it. That is some super strength on a Dalton McKenzie. I mean, Super Z, you know, no, Dalton McKenzie was not throwing him. Super Z was defying gravity. Oh, and then Dalton McKenzie pulled him down he's, and tried well, to fly. Yeah, that's okay. the, he's still got to get the landing down. Still figuring it out. And that's okay. Day, well, day one as a superhero is not an easy one. Uh, no, no, not at all. Oh, goes for the stomp, ZD. Z, Super Z gets out of the way. Look at that, going for the base there of Dalton McKenzie. Super Z ducks under that shot. Oh, Oh, tried to use that super speed, but Dalton McKenzie caught him. Oh, what a backbreaker. Reminiscent of Bane. Trying to break the Z. You know, like break the bat, never mind. No, 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 I I got exactly what you're saying, but I'm just captivated by this new superhero here fighting evildoers in the middle of Davis Arena, but Dalton McKenzie, he might be putting, might be trying to put kryptonite in the cape of Super Z here, Josh. Well, you know, that uh, that strength of Dalton McKenzie seemed to have been the uh, the kryptonite here that you were just talking about. But Super Z, Beating off the energy of the, the OVW faithful. Hey, Batman fights for Gotham. Super Z is fighting for Davis Arena, and they are wheeling him on right now. Super Z back to his feet and overpowering Dalton McKenzie. Oh, but that knee to the midsection stops that momentary. Oh, what? Look at that. He's <laughs> flying. Super Z is flying. And again, he defies gravity. He's just got to get the landing down. 
Super Z landed awfully rough on that middle rope, but hang on. Oh, McKenzie goes straight into that post. That super agility of Super Z, look at this. Flying like a battering ram now. Super Z uh, activating human torpedo here. A super European for his European super friends. And that neck breaker. A super kip up. Super Z. Feeling the power here, feeling the love. Oh, goes to springboard off those ropes. Oh, look at that, springboard forearm. Drop into McKenzie, Super Z, Josh. Flying, landing with such grace and precision. Well, Super Z, hang on. Going to the outside. Brian, he got the cape. What does the cape do? You don't tug on Super Z's cape. It looks like he's about to take flight. Dalton McKenzie finding out his arms aren't long enough to box with Super Z. Well, Super Z up top. McKenzie's in the landing zone. Super Splash. Super Z got it. Your winner of the match, Super Z. Super Z with the one, two, three in a standing ovation here at Davis Arena. The Super Z with a super debut. A hero is born tonight here at Davis Arena. OEW is touring the country, and it's your chance to see the superstars of wrestlers on Netflix live. Friday, April 26th, OBW comes to Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee, and Marathon Music Works. Also on Friday, April 26th, as part of the Kentucky Derby Festival, it's our annual Run for the Ropes event down on the waterfront at the Chow Wagon. Thursday night, May 2nd, it's Double Crossed from the waterfront of downtown Louisville. Live on pay-per-view, get in free to the event with your Derby Festival Pegasus pin. And Friday, May 31st, OVW is headed north for the very first time to De Plains, Illinois. The De Plains Theater bell time there at 8 p.m. Then on Saturday night, June 8th, a huge event in Pikeville, Kentucky for a very special live first ever pay-per-view event from the Appalachian Wireless Arena. You can get those tickets at OVWTix.com right now. It's the first ever OVW National Tour presented by Danos. Get your tickets now and experience OVW live. The Four Peg Smokehouse highlight of the night. Uh oh, come on. Jaden Nero on the apron here. Hold on. Hold on. Star Rider. Star Rider, the number one contender. What's he doing out here? Even in the odds, oh. taking out. Oh, hold on. Look what happened to Peso. Four Peg Smokehouse and Bar, 1053 Goss Avenue in Louisville. Kidding me? This has to be a joke, right? This is obscene. I. You know what? No, no, no. Cash is one of my best friends. I'm not going to sit here and watch these two idiots make a mockery of anything that has to do with him. Excuse me if I get a little choked up. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for being here. I'm a little verklempt. This is gonna be rough. Now normally, I would come out and say, 
mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the most creamiest of them all? But tonight, I'm not going to do that. Tonight, I'm not going to do that. And then I would say, OVW, scream for the wet dream tag team. But I'm not going to do that either. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that tonight. Because tonight, we're here to show our respects, our condolences to two great men, two fallen brothers. So if I can please get a moment of silence, because if I can please get a moment of silence, Because here to deliver the eulogy is Brother Omar, Big Daddy Splash. Please give it up for uh, Big Daddy Splash here. Deliver deliver the eulogy. All right, I don't understand why you guys are not taking this more seriously. We're here to lay to rest the careers of Cashflow and Mahabali Shira at All right, even, even though you guys are being very unprofessional, I will move forward. I'll move forward with what I have to say. Now, there are times there are times when you have something to say and, and the moment comes and, and, and everything changes. I, I didn't know how I would feel until I saw this casket here. And now I, I, am, so, I am so overcome with emotion. I, 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 I don't know if I have the words to express the way I feel correctly. But, but, you know, things with Cashflow and Shira, they actually started out very well. We, we lived in harmony in the OVW locker room, Peaches and Cream, and the Golden Lions. And, and, then, and then Netflix came in and everything started to change. And you know, their, their egos just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where there was just something off in OVW. And, and you know what that reminds me of? It, it reminds me of Godzilla. Now, when I say reminds me of Godzilla, Godzilla is not good, nor is he bad. Godzilla, Godzilla is a force of nature Godzilla is a force of nature that brings about balance. And, and it just seemed like the balance was off. It seemed like the balance was off here at OVW. You people have no class. You have no class. You dirt, you dirty Kentucky people. You dirty Kentuckians. You have no class. Anyway, like I was saying, like I was saying, Luscious and I, Luscious and I had to rise up from the depths and we had to restore balance to OVW. And we came in and we torched everything and like, like, like a tidal wave of justice, we swept upon the eternal shore and washed away Cashflow and Shira. So, even though, 
even though you Kentuckians have no class, and you should have got swept away in that, in that tornado that was coming earlier today. That should have swept all your asses away. If you guys would please, please direct your attentions to the screens, Beaches and Cream, we put together a lovely montage to commemorate the careers of Cashflow and Shira. Please, please. take a moment to express my deepest gratitude. Without you, there is no OVW. Without your passion, your energy, your unwavering support, there is no us. There's no talent, no production. Without you, there's no OVW. Thank you for being the driving force behind everything we do. The unsung heroes of our saga. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you OVW fans. We can't do it without you. Introducing first, from Louisville, Kentucky, the Iron Demon, Shane Mercer! Dude looks like the entire band of the Misfits got the ooze from the second Ninja Turtles movie. Now he's just this back-flipping, body-throwing monster. Yeah, I'm not mad with anything at all that you just said. At all. Shane Mercer is a true force of nature like the weather we've seen in Kentuckyana here tonight, Brian. You're absolutely right. There's been some maneuvers I've seen him do that are bits of act of God. Shane Mercer is just otherworldly powerful tonight. He's got a kaiju in front of him as well, though, Josh. That he does. He's facing off against former OBW heavyweight champion, the veteran, Jack Vaughn. And his opponent, from Charlotte, North Carolina, the veteran, Jack. The veteran Jack Vaughn. Josh, this man has more lives than a cat, but here's the thing. 
He doesn't really need that many. I mean, the man kicked down the doors of OVW when he showed up here, beat Omar Mir for the heavyweight championship, and he hasn't really left that inner circle of heavyweight championship contenders since he's been here. He hasn't, you're absolutely right, but Shane Mercer, that gives him even more of a reason to try to knock him off of his pedestal and show the rest of OVW management what Shane Mercer brings to the table. You're absolutely right, Josh. And there's different motivations on either side. To your point, Shane Mercer, huge opportunity to get himself in that upper echelon conversation. Jack Vaughn desperately trying to keep people below him so that he doesn't have to beat somebody else to get back into title contention. You said it earlier, Jack Vaughn has a bunch of lives. He might have nine lives like a cat, but if Shane Mercer has anything to say about it, he's gonna knock a couple of those off tonight. Shane Mercer is the human yeet machine. You know this to be true. Oh, I've, I've seen some <laughs> of those human yeets. Oh, here we go. Look how fast Shane Mercer is as Good well, Lord. though. Lord. And that might be the speed advantage. Might be Shane Mercer's best friend in this matchup against Jack Vaughn. You know, and Shane Mercer, he has all the attributes that you look for. He's got speed. He's got strength. He's got stamina. So does Jack Vaughn. But I think Shane Mercer may edge him out just a little bit in the strength department. <laughs> and that's taking nothing away from the veteran. Veteran in the absolute best shape of his career, but Shane Mercer stays in the best shape of his career. But once again, you know, Jack Vaughn, he lives by the slogan of, if you don't like Jack Vaughn, then forget you. He doesn't say forget, though. No, he doesn't. He doesn't, but family show. Yep, still an F word. Look at that. Kick straight to the midsection. Jack Vaughn now. Side headlock here in the middle of the ring. Trying to ring it in a little bit there. Play some mind games with Shane Mercer as well. Well, you know, and that's the thing. Uh, when you do something like that, when you jump up and you come back down, you still have a hold of the man's neck and you start jarring his neck. You're forcing it back and forth. You're trying to Charlie Horse or pull a muscle. Look at Shane Mercer overpowering Vaughn again. Oh, and Mercer just looks unfazed. Oh, Jack Vaughn getting frustrated right now. They're maybe trying to play mind games. <laughs> I think you just realized he ticked off the Iron Demon. Yeah, no, you do not want to make the Iron Demon mad because there is no ring assault anywhere that can protect you from him. Jack Vaughn calling a timeout here. I don't think the referee heard him, though, because he started the ring out count. There's no timeouts in wrestling. Well, everything's a no till you ask. Oh, look at this. Shane Mercer bringing him. Jack Vaughn One back in whether he wants to or arm. not. Good Lord. One arm Shane Mercer brought that man in and charges him with that European uppercut. Shane Mercer has been in the driver's seat since this ooh, match started. European there in the corner. <laughs> Jack Vaughn, I think you, uh, there was instinct. I think there was instinct anger. I don't disagree. And Mercer sees Vaughn start to move, start to almost get himself up off the canvas and snatches him up. Look at the power of Shane Mercer. He's holding a damn near seven foot tall man with ease. Oh, God. And dropped him down with authority, though, Josh. Cover. Didn't hook the leg there. Shane Mercer might have cost himself a victory. Jack Vaughn able to get the shoulder up. Contrasting styles here as well, Josh. You got Jack Vaughn, that very throwback kind of style. Oh, God. And you got Shane Mercer throw everything at the wall. Kind of a new uh, Smash Mouth kind of style. Yeah, you know, throwback style versus throw everything at you style. There we go. Or just throw you. Oh, oh. look at that Jack Vaughn barricade. Or, sorry, like a battering ram off the middle rope. Wipes out Mercer, goes for the cover, but only gets a one count. And that's Again, saying something. Yeah, Shane Mercer is tough as hell, man. When you get someone the size of Jack Vaughn throwing their entire body weight at you and you kick out at one, you're sending a message to Jack Vaughn. Vaughn just trying to stretch out Mercer's neck yet again. You got to think he, he might be trying to weaken that neck for that kaiju lariat. Chop across the chest. Mercer just tries to shrug it off. Crushing blows to the midsection. Jack Vaughn now has Shane Mercer where he wants him. Oh, well, as soon as I said it, look at that. Vicious Irish whip into the corner. Shane Mercer taking control back over Jack Vaughn. Vaughn goes up top. Well, hang on, Mercer's got a hold of him. Mercer just, to your point, yeeting Jack Vaughn off the top rope. And now Mercer charges through. Huge clothesline wiping out Vaughn. Wrestling. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. 
two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. From counting the lights in your local armory to main eventing in Korokan Hall in Tokyo, Japan. Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Out on the frontier, where loyalty is hard to come by, a double cross can leave you staring down the barrel of a six-shooter. In a land where every handshake hides a secret agenda, trust is a luxury few can afford. And I know you're the dirty dog that double-crossed me. OVW presents Double Crossed. Live on pay-per-view Thursday, May 2nd. Order now at ovwrestling.com. OVW Heavyweight Champion and, and, and taking control. I mean, you're not wrong whatsoever. And look at this, Mercer just clubbing across the chest of Vaughn. Yeah, Vaughn's still not going down, LeBron. And here's the thing, Jack Vaughn, not a man accustomed to being overpowered. <laughs> not a man accustomed to being well, on the on the weekend of, of the offense. You know what I mean? Jack Vaughn usually in control of things, usually can overpower if not oversize everybody. But Shea Mercer just been a hurdle that Jack Vaughn can't seem to jump tonight. Well, just you like know, that sentence, I, I had issues. To be honest, I'm not shocked. The Iron Demon, oh, the Iron Demon, he's like trying to fight three or four minutes one time. Every time you think you've got him knocked down, all of a sudden you're blindsided, and it's him back on his feet. Shane Mercer back on the attack, not giving, I was saying, about to say not giving Vaughn an inch to breathe, but gave him just enough, and Vaughn found that door open and went right through it. Mercer down to the floor, and you see him clutching at that elbow, may have hyperextended it a little bit there. You see him, Vaughn say, go for the begging the ref to go ahead and start the count. He wants this thing to be over in the easiest way possible. I mean, a win is a win, and I'm not really mad at Jack Vaughn for trying to exploit that. I wouldn't say I'm not mad at him, but I can't blame him. Whatever you can do to get some distance between yourself and Shane Mercer. And Mercer back into the ring. You know, I'm going to mend an old joke here, Brian. After the apocalypse, the only things that are going to be left are cockroaches, Keith Richards, and the Iron Demon, Shane Mercer, because he just doesn't stop coming. You're absolutely right. King of the apocalypse, Shane Mercer. In trouble right now, though. Jack Vaughn found a way to turn this around. And, get, and again, relying on that count. But let me ask you, though, is Jack Vaughn maybe making a mistake giving Shane Mercer too much time to recover? I would say yes. Like, if I were a betting man, and I am, I would say that giving Shane Mercer an inch to try to get any sort of semblance and reason back is not a good thing because that whole time he's just formulating what he's going to do to you when he gets his hands on you. I mean, I can only speculate, but I think maybe Jack Vaughn didn't want to go to the outside and try to keep Shane Mercer down because Shane Mercer has had Jack, like, just like that, has had Jack's number throughout this matchup. Like I was saying, fighting Mercer's like trying to fight multiple people at the same time. It's just, again, he is almost like an endless gas tank. You think you've got him shut down, and here he comes. The onslaught doesn't stop. It's like... Sis Fist trying to roll the stone up a hill. Oh, look at that European, but nobody home. And Mercer clutching again at that elbow. Hang on, Vaughn. Taking advantage, small package there, two count. It drops the hammer right in between the shoulder blades of Mercer. And you're seeing that capitalization style of Jack Vaughn finding that opening, turning an inch into a mile, finding any sort of mistake. And Jay Mercer hasn't made many. Vaughn with a stomp to the midsection, trying to drive all the oxygen out of the body of Mercer. Now Vaughn bringing Mercer back up to a vertical base here. You gotta wonder what's Vaughn got in mind. See Ram Shane back in that corner. Oof, and you're seeing Jack Vaughn slowing things down here, really dictating the pace of the matchup so he doesn't make a mistake that Shane Mercer can turn into a powerful offensive maneuver. Another forearm right across the chest, driving the wind out of Mercer. Oh, and Vaughn now just using the ropes to help choke Mercer out, taking full advantage of the referee's five count. Hang on, though. Vaughn charges through. All that massive Jack Vaughn coming down on Shane Mercer and that throat being shoved into that rope, Josh. Shane tries to roll back towards the middle of the ring to, to get away from those ropes, get himself back up to a fighting, fighting position. On his knees, Vaughn with a chop. 
<laughs> Look at that, Shea Mercer's chest up, hurting that hand of Jack Fallon on that chop. I mean, the scar tissue across the body of Mercer from those wars he has had all around the world. Look at this, Mercer showing signs of life here, fighting back into this, taking Vaughn against the ropes. Mercer fires back up Vaughn. Irish whip, and Mercer takes Vaughn down with a clothesline. Here comes Shane again. Shane Mercer coming alive here, and Jack Vaughn looks, oh, spins right around him, Northern Leary to the back of the head. Jack Vaughn is shook here. Shane Mercer might be closing on his biggest win in OVW to date. It's like the OVW faithful, a little torn between who they want to see win this one. Oh, hang on. Out goes Vaughn. Oh, There's that big boot. Two ba count only, Brian. Barely a two count yeah. there, though. Shane Mercer had that arm moving pretty darn quick. Mercer's going to get his shoulders off the canvas as quick as humanly possible, or inhumanly possible, and the speed that he has. And Josh, you mentioned uh, the crowd a little split here nice Two guys doing their job and doing it incredibly well. Sometimes people just like to see you do your job. But look at this airplane spin. Jack Vaughn goes back to his roots, tries to dizzy up Mercer, but Mercer pops him up, catches him. <laughs> oh my God! Fall away slam! Pop up, fall away slam. Let's not take away that yeah. pop up. Good Lord. Oh my. Shane Mercer don't play. Look at that oh. Vaughn. Boot on that bottom rope. The veteran with that good ring awareness knew where he was and used those long limbs to reach that bottom rope, break the referee's count. Absolutely unreal pop-up fall away there. And Shane Mercer almost had Jack Vaughn, but tossed the veteran a little too close to the ropes. Look at this Jack Vaughn now, seemingly retreating, going for the ramp, Josh. Vaughn just trying to get away from Mercer. Mercer like the Terminator, just not stopping. <laughs> literally and dragging the man by his ankle. Literally dragging Jack Vaughn, a seven foot man, pleading to get away. Vaughn up to his feet. Oh, Mercer catches him by the throat. Vaughn thought going for that Kaiju Larry. No. He's yes. Got, oh my God. Fifth row, Shane. A veteran oh. press slam almost. Oh, there's that Kaiju Lariat. Blasting that Lariat. Can Mercer kick out of here? Your winner of this match, Jack Vaughn! Jack Vaughn barely picking up the victory over Shane Mercer here. What an absolute clash of the Titans this hour's main event was. Jack Vaughn holding on by the skin of his teeth. What a performance by Shane Mercer, but the veteran Jack Vaughn hitting the winner's pay window. OEW is touring the country, and it's your chance to see the superstars of wrestlers on Netflix live. Friday, April 26th, OBW comes to Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee, and Marathon Music Works. Also on Friday, April 26th, as part of the Kentucky Derby Festival, it's our annual Run for the Ropes event down on the waterfront at the Chow Wagon. Thursday night, May 2nd, it's Double Crossed from the waterfront in downtown Louisville. Live on pay-per-view, get in free to the event with your Derby Festival Pegasus pin. And Friday, May 31st, OBW is headed north for the very first time to Des Plaines, Illinois, the Des Plaines Theater, bell time there at 8 p.m. Then on Saturday night, June 8th, a huge event in Pikeville, Kentucky for a very special live first ever pay-per-view event from the Appalachian Wireless Arena. You can get those tickets at obwtix.com right now. It's the first ever OBW National Tour presented by Danos. Get your tickets now and experience OBW live. There's an electricity in this building. We take what we want. Click. Oh, click. Welcome to OBW. Look out. Oh. oh, Curtis. Face first in the exposed turnbuckle. Nobody else. Gun runs himself into that turnbuckle. Feeling back in his fingers. Wait a minute. What the hell? What's this? Real one's out here. What's he doing? What does he have on his hand? Oh! oh. Real one just dropped gun. Was, it, was that a belt? He just that was a belt. It wasn't the OBW heavyweight belt. What the hell? Referee's still trying to get that turnbuckle pad back on after the damage is already done. Look what Luke just did. He just lowered the knee pad. Luke! Luke just hit the certifier. We got, we got a new champion. He did it. We got a new champion. Your winner. I will 
I'll tell you one thing though, we are now absolutely in the certified era of OVW. Josh cracks forming in the foundation of the Bad Girls Club as of late. Yeah, that's the first time that we have seen them really on the same page in weeks, Brian. We've seen miscues, miscommunications, and misfires as far as punches hitting the wrong people. These ladies have been a hard time getting on the same page. Tonight, they got to pull it together, though. And we are heading towards double cross with these women. are going to find themselves in a four corners tag team matchup, Josh. We'll talk about that a little bit later on as this match gets rolling. And their opponents, the team of Ladybird and Sophia Rose, America's Sweethearts! The All-American Sweethearts here, Josh, a team that has really gelled together over the last couple months and taken OVW by storm. That they have, they've become a quick favorite of the OVW faithful here. And they're gonna be part of that Four Corners Women's Tag Team match at Double Cross, live from Waterfront Park, celebrating 150 years of the Kentucky Derby Festival and 30 years of OVW. Folks, that's free as long as you got a Pegasus pin. Come see us celebrate 30 years of OVW and 150 years of that Kentucky Derby Festival. But right now, Josh, tag team matchup heading into that momentum on the line here. We're going to see the All-American Sweethearts in that Four Corners tag, but we're also going to see Layla teaming with Hema, Tiffany teaming with Ellie, and Freya, the Slayer team with Hollywood Haley J. Yeah, that we are. And, and here's the thing, the, Layla, Tiffany, they're, they've been best friends for years. The question is, with the, the miscues over the course of the last few weeks, are they going to be able to be on the same page here tonight? There's layered dynamics here. Friends for best for best friends for many years, Layla and Tiffany. But also, Tiffany seemingly jealous of Layla as the OVW Women's Champion. Both women wanting to be the head of the Bad Girls Club. Tonight, they're partners. They're partners in the Bad Girls Club. But May 2nd at Double Cross, they are across the ring from each other. I mean, there are layers to this, Josh. It's like an ogre. And look at this, Layla Gray taking it to Sophia Rose here in the early goings. Rolls her through there. Oh, and look at this, the OEW Women's Champion uh, taking uh, taking a little bit of time to, to pose and preen. Layla, Layla so, Gray's never been short on confidence, Josh, but after winning that championship, she's been a whole different level. That she has, and Sophia Rose, you know, not very happy with that. But cut off now. Layla Gray has got a hold of that arm. Oh, oh look at this. Quick roll up and Tiffany Nieves had her back turned to the ring. And Layla Gray in trouble. Sophia Rose sends her into the corner. Handspring back elbow and a tag into Ladybird. 
Labor rolls through now. Look at this. The athleticism of Lady Bird as she just drills the OEW Women's Champion in the corner. Yeah, I think Lady Bird would love to get a pin on Lady the Great and maybe a championship opportunity, but oh, hold on, Tiffany Nieves, former Women's Champion, made her way in here now. That's a hard tag, too. You saw a little, little banter there, we'll call it, between Layla and Tiffany. Tiffany kind of screaming at her partner. I mean, I can't really repeat some of the words that I've heard come out of the mouths of these two towards each other lately. Oh, and look at that. Tiffany Nieves tried to throw that forearm, but Lady Bird just cranking on that arm. Oh, hold on, look at this. Tiffany Nieves using every part of the ring. The referee right there. And Tiffany taking full advantage of that count. So she possibly released that for a second, I didn't see, but Lady Bird now takes the arm. And you notice Tiffany turned around to her, to her corner there, almost looking for a tag. Layla had her back turned. Well, you know, turnabout's fair play, no pun intended, but Tiffany did the same thing to Layla just a few moments ago. And here we go, double team maneuver from America. Sweet, look at that. Double shotgun drop kick. We got Tiffany there in that midsection, might have cracked her rib. Sophia Rose going for the pin right here. One count, Tiffany able to get the shoulder up. And Josh, if you're Tiffany, if you're Layla, you're vying for leadership at the Bad Girls Club, as it were, either you want to take the pin in this match. No, no, you do not. Especially when you're the champion, you don't ever want to be pinned. The thing about it is, that just puts the idea into everyone else's head, well, if, if she could beat her, so could I. But look at that, back turned, nobody home in a roll up. Tiffany didn't even notice the pin was happening. The miscues and the miscommunication of the Bad Girls Club continue here. And look at the intent there from, uh, from, from Sophia Rose trying to keep the women's champ grounded. And just, it, a lot of stakes in this match. We're heading towards double cross. Oh, look at oh. that. Hema and Ellie getting involved, just tripping up Sophia Rose. Sophia going face first, and now Ellie and Hema arguing over who did it. Even when they get it right, they can't get on the same page. This is ridiculous. Is Hema taking a crowd pull? Maybe. I, I am so confused at the dynamic here. Layla Gray right back on the attack. Harley Jane in trouble here. And look at Sophia Rose being drugged back to the corner now by Layla Gray. Tiffany blind tagging herself in, telling Layla, get out. Tiffany in, Tiffany in control of the situation where you have to give the assist to Ellie and him on the floor. Let them fight over who did it, but it still was effective, and Tiffany knocking Lady Bird off the apron yet again. Tiffany now playing some mind games, getting under the skin of Lady Bird. Look at this double team maneuver. Or hold on, never mind. Layla telling Tiffany to get at work as a team. Come on. I'm even getting frustrated now. Layla Gray now with Sophia Rose up on her shoulders, but Sophia slides out, rolls through, gets a tag to Lady Bird. And look at that little sly smile from oh. Layla. Oh! Little here's something for you. Lady Bird didn't forget that cheap shot from Tiffany taking her off the apron. Gave her one to match, and now Lady Bird taking it to the OVW Women's Champion. Lady Bird is absolutely fired up here. Scoop and a slam, rolls through. Lady Bird, absolutely incredible right now. Oh, take a little time to appreciate the fans. Oh my gosh! Springboard moonsault off the middle. Two count only as Tiffany Nieves saves this one for her. What did she save it for her team or did she save it so that she could just get in there and scream at Layla? Oh, it's hard to say, but Harley Jane just speared Tiffany out of her boots. Sophia Rose almost cut her completely in half there. Sophia dropping Tiffany, now Lady Bird alone in there with the women's champion. And Josh, you gotta think that moonsault, she almost got a three count. She would have had a three count had it not been for Tiffany. Oh! Super <laughs> kick to the point of the jaw. Should we going for it again? Going back to the well again. And there's still something in there. Oh, oh caught Layla right in the face. Lady Bird just pinned the champion. Your winners of the match, the All-American Sweetheart! All-American Sweetheart pulled the upset victory, and it was the OEW Women's Champ that was pinned! Did you see Ellie and Hema though tripping each other up on the way in, costing the match for Layla? This just keeps getting worse and worse for the Bad Girls Club. More issues, more cracks in the foundation of the Bad Girls Club, and they're gonna have to get on the same page, but come May 2nd, double-crossed. 
they're on the different teams. Very true. Well, I mean, Brian, you know, it's just like you said, a double cross on May 2nd at Waterfront Park. They're going to split the Bad Girls Club into two different teams. They're part of that huge four-corner tag match. Folks, we're going to talk about double cross a little bit later on. But Josh, let's go ahead and talk about the action you can expect to see this hour at OVW. I'm talking about Tusk and Chains taking on the dark forces of dysfunction. Yeah, dysfunction, not one to be uh, trifled with. The Tusk and Chains, they want to run through them. But let's talk about our hour two main event. We're going to see Big Beef taking on the new OVW heavyweight champion, certified Luke Curtis. Luke Curtis' first match has become an OVW heavyweight champion. You got to think he's going to want to impress, folks. Hell of a main event coming up. Do not go anywhere. Ninety percent of natural sleep aids don't work. Most remedies make bold claims, but never measure their real impact. Meet Sophie, the natural plant-based spray that does. Sophie isn't one size fits all. It experiments with different plant extracts to find what works for you. Paired with an app and machine learning, Sophie learns to optimize your sleep because not all plants work the same for everyone. Sophie is as unique as you. And now, Hot Point presents the toughest moment of the night. Probably fast for a bottle of milk. Elect Clearly, lactose intolerant <laughs> as he is dominating this man. Oh, Ooh. goodness. Grabbing those shoulders. Ooh. It's going to be quite a challenge, as you can see. This is Kentucky's strongest man. Good Lord. Revolver being treated oh. like a child. The toughest moment of the night, brought to you by Hot Point, America's hardest working appliances. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your special guest commentator. He is one half of the OVW Tag Team Champions, Adam Revolver. Well, here I am with Brian Kinnison. They got me the worst seat in the house. The following contest is a tag team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first the team of Kyle Roberts and Brandon Espinoza. This is Dysfunction. Dysfunction making their way to the ring, returning to Davis Arena, making his way to the commentary desk. One half the OVW tag team champions, Adam Revolver. Adam, I'll just ask you, why? What are you doing out here? Well, I'm out here, I'm, I'm going to scout. If I'm going to be honest, I'm pulling for these guys. But does it to me you have issues with Tuscan Chains as of late? I assume you're out here, not going to do any shenanigans, going to stay right here the entire time? The whole time, right next to you. And their opponent, the team of the mammoth Donovan Cecil and the What? What's your issue, Adam? Why look, you at these, look at these mindless people. They're having a good time. Oh. Yeah, I was clapping. Yeah, you all need to sit down. It's embarrassing. The, the crowd loves Tuscan Chains because Tuscan Chains, they come out here, they give 110% every week, and they have fun doing it. I, I mean, I know you're a bit of a stick in the mud. <laughs> you have to at least understand these people wanted to come out for getting their worst for a while and enjoying Tuscan Chains. Look, I, I'm not here to disrespect the team like Tuscan Chicken Sandwich. I'm out here to scout them because I know how good they are. The fact is, they're good, but we're great. The Overmen are great. I don't know what to say back to you on that. As you see Brandon Espinosa trying to get an early advantage on Donovan Cecil, and that's not a man that you want to try to make mad. Donovan Cecil taking exception to that. Kentucky's strongest man, Donovan Cecil. 
So I'm gonna ask you for your inside, Adam, because we saw you go toe to toe with Donovan Cecil recently. I mean, what's it like being in there with Kentucky's strongest man? Uh, he's, you know, it's tough for sure. He's he's Kentucky's strongest man, but you have to remember, I've got Bo Amir on my team. He's he's Texas's largest man. Everything's bigger in Texas. Oh, well, we ain't in Texas, and Donovan Cecil just proved why he's Kentucky's strong, Kentucky's strongest man. Yeah, I mean, look, he just double suplexed those guys. That is impressive, and look at that. That's impressive. But when it comes to when these guys face us, we're not going to be doing keg rolls and uh, yoke pulls and whatever else that he does as the strongest man of Kentucky. You got a keg? Nah, looks like a keg in the ring wrestling right now. Yeah, a keg is going to beat you black and blue. I don't know if I call Donovan Cecil the keg. He's the whole damn brewery, and right now he is beating the suds out of dysfunction oh, single-handedly. Kyle Roberts better be... Very thankful he ducked that clothesline. <laughs> Brandon Espinosa not thankful that Kyle Roberts did though because he just had to catch him. Oh no, not this. Look out. Tita being used as a weapon. I think the referee needs to count faster when they do that. Is that leg of T-Dub still got the brace on? It's still not at 100%. Adam, let me, I gotta imagine that's your target. You and Bowman here have been salivating thinking about that knee. Yeah, you, look, we're smart guys, we know. Ooh. We can see weaknesses. You take out the leg on the big guy, or you can take out the leg on the dancing guy. Either way, it serves a purpose. Well, taking the knee out from TW3 definitely takes away his speed. But TW, even with one leg, is still dangerous, Revolver. You, of all people, should understand that. Oh, my goodness. He T learned that from Fortnite. Oh, come on. TW, a very successful one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest over the last couple weeks. Oh, Tuscan Chain's been picking up a lot of big wins, and Adam came a breath away from beating you guys for the OVW Tag Team Championship. That yeah. was great. Look, they look like they're having fun. I can tell you, yeah. we, I do not have fun in the ring, okay? You don't I have do fun not. anywhere in life, do you? Okay. You have the personality of a boiled peanut. All right. I don't, you got some jokes about my pale complexion, too, while you're at it? I mean, I do. I usually do every week. You know, you're the pale prince of uh, the Overmen. But hang on. Donovan Cecil and TW3 looking to put away Kyle Roberts and dysfunction here, but Roberts, oh, Ooh. and right to that knee. You know, everything that I'm seeing, I'm going to report back to Shannon the dude. He's on vacation. He's in Panama City Beach enjoying life. Bo's in Texas. He's training, getting ready. So we'll have a scouting report, and I promise you, the, the times in the past oh. we were a little off guard, but we're going to be more ready than ever Espinosa, on May Espinosa using Kyle Roberts like a weapon, throwing him like a missile. T-Dub trying to fight out of the corner. This ring been cut in half. T-Dub being isolated here. Now, Adam, let me ask you, if you're, if your dysfunction is that you're playing too, do you try to isolate T-Dub or do you try to take out the big man? It really just depends on the opportunity. In the past, we have isolated T-Dub, but it's not beneath us to take out the bigger guy. Again, Bo Amir is on my team. Bo Amir, the latest man added to the Overman. Oh, look at that, Kyle Robertson up and over. Oh, and TW3 makes the tag to Cecil and see. Oh, it felt the ground shake. up the top row. How does a man that size have that much agility? Donovan Cecil in serious control here. The power man of Tuscan Chains. Charging in. Oh, oh dysfunction's in a lot of trouble. Hang on, hang on. Here comes that mammoth stampede. Plowing through both men. I mean, Donovan Cecil, the power, the absolute strength. Donovan just makes it seem so effortless. T Dub, stop it. Are you kidding me? Oh. Mushroom stomp into a frog splash. You see T Dub. Oh! I hope he broke his knee. Clutching at the knee. Save to John Cena there. Your winners of the yeah, you gotta be picked up. That's a smart move. Get hurt right before your big match. Those are the men you'll be defending those tag team championships against May 2nd at Double Cross the Kentucky Derby Festival, Adam. Oh, don't you worry. I'm ready. We are ready. The Overmen are always ready. Dust and Chains, they know what they want. They're coming for those OVW Tag Team Championships. If you've ever dreamed of being part of professional wrestling or sports entertainment, make that dream a reality and attend the world-famous Harvard of Pro Wrestling, the OVW Academy with Al Snow, the birthplace of legends including Batista, John Cena, Randy Orton, 
The Miz, and many more. Will you be the next name added to that impressive list? Visit OVWAcademy.com and apply now. Out on the frontier, where loyalty is hard to come by, a double cross can leave you staring down the barrel of a six-shooter. In a land where every handshake hides a secret agenda, trust is a luxury few can afford. And I know you're the dirty dog that double-crossed me. OVW presents Double Crossed. Live on pay-per-view Thursday, May 2nd. Order now at ovwrestling.com. We are on the road to May 2nd to Double Crossed, a live television event from the Kentucky Derby Festival, celebrating 30 years of OVW and 150 years of the Kentucky Derby. We are honored and we feel very privileged to be able to have that partnership with the Kentucky Derby Festival. We've had it for many years now, but this will be our first live television event from that location. So that's an incredible accomplishment. And that's all thanks to each and every single one of you. Thank you guys so very much. And since we're on our way to May 2nd and Double Crossed, I'd like to have a special announcement, but I need a certain person out here for it. Can we have out Tony Gunn, please? Shotgun Tony Gunn! Controversial week, and Tony Gunn not in a good mood. And holding that belt that real one used to cost him the OWW Heavyweight Championship. Tony, as I said, we're on our way to May 2nd. I know you're probably curious as to if you have a match at Double Cross, and I can assure you you do. And I'm sure you're going to be happy who it's against. I'm going to give you the opportunity to finally face the real one, one-on-one, -on -one, in this ring, May 2nd. And not only that, I'm going to put you in an Arkansas strap match, so that way we finish this one way or another. Finally, Al Snow, I want to say thank you. Thank you for finally making this match. Thank you for doing this. But I'm going to make a promise. Come May 2nd, I'm going to whip Enzo's ass from pillar to post. But I'm not going to make any promises on what kind of condition that I'll leave him in. Come May 2nd. Click, click, boom. Freya, Freya, listen, Al's right out here if you're so mad. If you're so mad about it, Al's right here. I didn't actually crack you with the soccer rocks on purpose. Look, let's go talk to him. Come, 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 come. I don't think they're Sorry, guys, either. we have to have this conversation right now. How about you shut up for a second? Al, how are you going to put us together? What is going on? Okay, Al, did you see what she did to me? Yes. We all see it. Listen, we're all trying to You're going to make us work together after she... It's nothing against you. We're all trying to be women's champion, Freya. We all know that the baddies, brokies, whatever you want to call them, got the title. We were all in the ring for that reason. No harm, no foul. There was... We have scheduled for May 2nd a four-corners tag 
you, Haley, and Freya will be one team. We will have Tiffany and Ellie as another team. We will have Hema and we will have Layla as another team. And we will have America's Sweethearts as another team. That is what's scheduled. And if the two of you don't settle your differences, you're going to give the Bad Girls Club a distinct advantage. Is that what you think? Listen, Freya, are you good? It sounds like you need to be good. because Okay, okay. Shh. I'm going to take this sack of rocks and put it in your mouth. All right, Haley, you know what? Let's get along, girls, because the last thing I need is for you two to be out here fighting, and then we bring out the bad girls at the same time. All right, you know what, Haley? I can work with you if you're not going to cross me again. Never. I would, listen, we'll be a great team, Fred. You just need to relax. What we need to do is worry about the bad, broke girls. You're right, you know what? I've had it with the BS club, too. Look at these two, always crying and moaning to the boss. Speaking of crying and moaning to the boss, shut your mouth. Rather than focusing on each other, you should realize there are four girls in the Bad Girls Club. And we are the best at everything. Listen, to be honest, to be honest, I don't even care about these two. Trash. <laughs> I'm more concerned with America's sweetheart getting a lucky shot at me tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't we but just beat okay. you? We just beat you. That's right. The all-American sweetheart not only pinned the women's OVW champion, but on May 2nd, we're gonna be every single one of you. Uh, all right, okay, ladies, so let's, let's, okay, let's, hey, hey, let's bring it up. Okay, thank, thank you, can I get some help? Can I get some help out here, please? Thank you, please, let's, let's not let this get out of hand, ladies. Let's not let this get out of hand, okay? Please, thank you, oh my God. Okay, okay. OEW is touring the country and it's your chance to see the superstars of wrestlers on Netflix live. Friday, April 26th, OBW comes to Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee, and Marathon Music Works. Also on Friday, April 26th, as part of the Kentucky Derby Festival, it's our annual Run for the Ropes event down on the waterfront at the Chow Wagon. Thursday night, May 2nd, it's Double Crossed from the waterfront in downtown Louisville. Live on pay-per-view, get in free to the event with your Derby Festival Pegasus Pin. And Friday, May 31st, OVW is headed north for the very first time to Des Plaines, Illinois, the Des Plaines Theater, bell time there at 8 p.m. Then on Saturday night, June 8th, a huge event in Pikeville, Kentucky for a very special live first ever pay-per-view event from the Appalachian Wireless Arena. You can get those tickets at obwtix.com right now. It's the first ever OVW National Tour presented by Danos. Get your tickets now and experience OVW live. The Four Peg Smokehouse highlight of the night. Uh-oh, come on. Jay De Niro on the apron here. Hold, hold on. Star Rider. Star Rider, the number one contender. What's he doing Rider. out here? Even in the odds. Oh. Taking out. oh, hold on. Look what happened to Peso. Four Peg Smokehouse and Bar, 1053 Goss Avenue in Louisville. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your OVW Rush Division Champion, Kota Peso. Say you rush missing champion, make his way to the ring, Josh. But having a hard time getting in there. Yeah, Hoda almost not even able to, to lift his leg to get through the front. 
He had that, uh, that mishap in his match last week with Tony Evans, and, and we still don't know fully the extent of that injury to his knee, uh, how many issues he's having, and what, what a recovery timetable looks like. But Hope Peso looking worse for wear here, Josh. The injuries are no joke. I've dealt with a couple of them myself, and it's, it makes everything else so hard. My pesos, listen here. <laughs> this is difficult for me to say. After my match of Thursday with Tony Evans, I did tear a ligament in my, on my knee, my right knee. The only reason I came out here Show my kids that no matter what, do what you want to do in life. Don't let nothing hold you down. It won't come to you. You have to go to it. This hurts. Not being able to see my kids and still fight through this. But all of you. And hearing that peso chant motivated me to become the Rush Division champion. Each and every one of you. Gracias. I thank you. And I love you too. So, I'm not sure how long I'll be out. So right now, the only thing I can do can't defend it as much as I want to, as much as I want to defend this, I can't. You're right. But until I get cleared is the only way I can. I'm not going to get cleared, not for a while. One thing I can say before I leave, again, thank you all for your support. I thank you. 
But to my kids out there, I'm, I'm coming home. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Really? Really? You want to know what you're showing your kids right now? That their daddy was a failure as a champion and a failure as a father. It's too far. You were good for one night, but to be the best, to be the champion, you gotta be great every night, and that's me. Manny, not if, but when I win that, your kids can call me daddy. Oh, come on. What a piece of garbage, oh, come on. He's a hurt man, oh, here we go. Star runner out here protecting Hota Peso. These three men have a history. Star Rider not gonna stand for Will Austin doing what he just did. What a piece of trash and that garbage eating smile. You gotta be kidding me. To all of the loyal fans of OVW, I want to take a moment to express my deepest gratitude. Without you, there is no OVW. Without your passion, your energy, your unwavering support, there is no us. There's no talent, no production. Without you, there's no OVW. Thank you for being the driving force behind everything we do. The unsung heroes of our saga. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you OVW fans. We can't do it without you. Gentlemen, please welcome your special guest commentator, Superior Tony Evans. Hush. The following contest is a non title match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Champions Trailer Park in Louisville, Kentucky, Big B. Big Beef making his way out here for your hour two main event of OBW Overdrive. Raucous ovation for Big Beef. And join us here at the commentary table. We've got a lot of questions here. Superior Tony Evans. I'm not here to scope. Hush. Hush. Got it. Say his name, say it right. Superior Tony Evans. And his opponent from Miami, Florida. He is the OVW Heavyweight Champion, certified Luke. Luke Curtis, your new OVW heavyweight champion. You know, and some people might say you have to put an asterisk next to that, yeah, give an assist a real one, but Certified did it all on his own with that certifier. Luke Curtis got himself to the main event picture by grit and determination, got himself to the OVW heavyweight championship the same way. You can put all the asterisks you want on it, but I don't think there's a person in the building, maybe one person at the desk, who would argue Luke Curtis did not deserve to be the OVW heavyweight champion. Luke Curtis has just improved more and more every single week since he got here into OVW a scant few years ago. And now he's OVW heavyweight champion. 
Now here's the thing. Can he hold up to the pressure? First match after becoming OVW Heavyweight Champion. Big Beef realizes the opportunity in front of him. Can you beat a hungry Big Beef? Well, that's the thing. Beefer is a great challenge for certified Luke Curtis to come out here and show off what he can do as OVW Heavyweight Champion. Here we go, collar and elbow tie up. Go ahead and hush you here. Oh, right, yep, that's fine. Let's see what's going on in front of us. Certified Luke Curtis. He is, he is every bit of what he says he is. However, what he is not is superior. He is putting a sleeper hold on the audience right now. You hear how dead it is in here? I didn't even have to tell them to hush. But what I will say to you is hush. What I will say to you is hush. And if I had to walk into that ring right now, both of those men would hush in my presence. You see, they're gonna be in here putting this audience to sleep. My bag has been very light going home lately. My bag has been very light coming into the arena. Well, your Luke bag's Curtis. pretty light, that's why you gotta bring it with you. Luke Curtis has something that I think would make my bag a little heavier, that I think would look very good around Superior Tony Evans' waist. Am I allowed to ask what it is, or are you going to tell me to hush? Hush. Yeah, there it is. Luke Curtis with that arm fully barred on Big Beef, and you see that he's got that knee across the jaw. He's trying to force a hyperextension there. Oh, and straight into a cross arm breaker. Luke Beef's got to get his shoulders off the, the canvas. Sorry, go ahead. No, Luke Curtis is an incredibly motivated competitor. Got him all the way to that heavyweight championship, but I don't know, there are a few competitors hungry. Oh, here we go. Two cat, there are a few competitors hungrier than Big Beef, and that is no pun intended. Ooh. Not at all. Drop oh, kick yeah, takes Beef cute. down. Hush. You see, when it comes to hunger, I am the hungriest one out here because I want what Luke Curtis has. You see, coming up on May 2nd, there is an event. There is an event that is huge for OVW. It is the 150th anniversary of the Kentucky Derby. You see, that is a huge event but I'm looking to make that a superior event. And I will make everyone hush that stands across the ring from me. It doesn't matter if it's one, two, three, 17, 19, 20 other men. Everybody will hush for me. That's the strength of the OVW Heavyweight Champion, certified Luke Curtis. Luke Curtis dropping big beef here. So Tony, I, was, I, I'm, don't even, I just wanna ask, so you, I put the piece together you're giving me, are you, Wanting to challenge Luke Curtis May 2nd at Double Crossed? Do you want that heavyweight championship to weigh down your bag? Do you, I mean, is, is that what I'm putting together here? What's this shirt say? What does it say? It's Tell a, me. It says hush. Do it. See, I'm not calling any shots as of right now, but I'm telling you where my sights are set, and they are right in front of me. That is a huge event coming up, but like I said, I will make it a oh. superior event. Folks, that's Double Cross, May 2nd at the Kentucky Derby Festival. Free if you got a Pegasus pin. You're not going to miss this history-making night where we celebrate 30 years of OVW. Big Beef now trying to impose his will on certified Luke Curtis. Beef, he's white trash, wonderful. He's got that smash mouth style. So let me ask you, Tony, you've been in the ring with Big Beef. And actually, if I remember correctly, you picked up a win over Big Beef. What's the secret? What's the sauce to get one over on Big Beef? Be superior. That's the, that's the only combination that's gonna be for anyone. Oof. Triangle drop kick out of Curtis. Takes Beef to the floor. But not to his, not off his feet. Big Beef, still on his feet. Don't be suicidal oh. from Luke Curtis. Oh my God, the champ going help. Wrestling, a love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. From counting the lights in your local armory to main eventing in Korokan Hall in Tokyo, Japan. Collar and Elbow. The wrestling brand. Out on the frontier where loyalty is hard to come by. A double cross can leave you staring down the barrel of a six-shooter. In a land where every handshake hides a secret agenda, trust is a luxury few can afford. And I know you're the dirty dog that double-crossed me. 
OVW presents Double Crossed. Live on pay-per-view Thursday, May 2nd. Order now at ovwrestling.com. Beef the entire time. If you don't, you are going to run into a world of pain. Oh, big cross, Bonnie! Luke Curtis taking down Beef. Cover, hook in the leg, both legs. And Beef kicks out with authority. Give him your best shot, he's gonna kick out. Both these guys, just so much heart in both of them, that never say die attitude. This, this match very well may run into next week. They might fight all the way up until double crossed. Oof. Beef with a chop across, or excuse me, Luke with a chop across the chest, a big beef. Oof. Beef getting filleted here in the corner by Luke Curtis. And folks, we are hitting the road with Dan O'Seasney. We are heading to Nashville here soon. Make sure you go to ovwtix.com and make sure you join us when we hit the Music City. Luke Curtis right now, OVW Heavyweight Champion. First match since gaining that gold. Wants a win here over Big Beef. And Big Beef, he wants a win over Champion. That he does. You, could you imagine what this could do for the career of Big Beef? Big Beef, a man who's always in the conversation, the man that's always in consideration. Now an opportunity to really put himself in those upper echelons. Cactus clothesline takes both men over. Stay Wait a down, minute. stay down. We've seen Beefer do this before. Oh, Beef goes for a cannonball, but Luke Curtis oh. sidestepped him. Beef just with a sickening thud into the floor. You've got to wonder how much damage was done to Big Beef. That massive Beef coming down like an avalanche and landing on that thin pad and hitting that concrete floor. Beef, might, he might be over the count right here. Already up to a four. If Luke was smart, he would let him stay out there. But the dummy's about to get out of the ring. Luke Curtis doesn't want to win that way, Tony. He wants you to see, show he's a fighting champion. He can be a fighting champion, but when you get somebody that's going to fight you back, we'll see how he reacts to that. I mean, Tony, what, would you have taken that cheap count out? Oh, 100%, I would have won the match. It doesn't matter what kind of cheap count out you say it is. It's a superior victory, all right? That's all that matters. I'm a superior man to Luke Curtis. I'm a superior man to Big Beef. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's the same result no matter what. Your winner, superior, Tony Evans. Oof. Tony, let me ask you. Beef. Say, Sorry, beef with the jawbreaker to, to cut off Superior's ramblings there about himself. Uh, you like to talk about yourself a lot, don't you? Well, I'm the only one to be talking about. Oh. I am the conversation to have. Close line out of the corner by certified Luke Curtis. Now, Tony, what, what if beef wins this match tonight? Would that not push you back further in the line? I mean, do you not maybe pull for certified there, a little bit? Uh, hush, hush, hush. First of all, there is no line. If there's a line, it starts behind Superior Tony Evans. I am the damn line. And it doesn't matter who wins, they've got something I want. And I'm gonna get it. Right now, Luke Curtis, he wants that victory, but can he get it over Big Beef, who's really taking the champion to the absolute limit tonight. I mean, Luke Curtis less than a week removed from that hellacious battle with Tony Gunn. He can't be going into this 100%. No, not at all, as you see Beef dragging him in. Oh, I thought he was going for that drapey DDT. Roll up. Ooh, big boot there for Just Beef. Like that, a foot to the face, that's all it takes. Maybe even a back fist to the face. Beef with that huge clothesline oh. in the corner there. I don't like the way you said that to me. Beef, hang on. He's going for that big side of Beef. Oh, he's done. He got he the cannonball done. that time. Like D U N done one two three. On you. Certified Luke Curtis managed to get his shoulder up off the canvas. You see the way Beef pinned him, putting his entire upper body frame across Luke Curtis, trying to hold the champ down. Beef charged in like a like a prize steer, seeing red. Just pulled his way right into that corner, but certified Luke Curtis had the wherewithal to kick out, and now throw those back elbows. Luke Curtis fighting out here, getting some offense on Big B, but you see the wear and tear on these guys' bodies. You've seen how much they put into this match so far. Right hands back and forth from both men, champion and, oh! 
Chop to the shoulder blade there. Oh, he would never land one of those chops on me. He would never put me on my back. Certified throwing hands. And again, going right behind the ear of Beef. You know, those shots to the, to the side of the skull, the base of the skull back there, they're so jarring. And Tony, I'm, I'm just gonna play, show a little bit of history here. You and Lou Curtis never had a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Never. Oh, here we go, roll up. You see, he's smart, he's avoided me until now because he knows I would have his number just like I've had every single other person's number here. Oh, yeah. Beef tries to charge through, certified goes to the waist lock. Oh, rolling through. Oh, Luke holding on to that waist lock. Rolls him through, pushing him down. Two count. Oh, Tony, some would argue Luke Curtis has found himself in, in different avenues than you. Found himself with different opportunities than you over the last year. Yeah, he's had help from different people that are at the top of the card. You have Jay De Niro standing right behind you. I fought my way up from the bottom where I started to the top where I'm at now. Jay That's De Niro all that matters. Did your fighting for you? Hush. I won the matches, didn't I? Just stating the obvious. That's all that matters. I win. Lou Curtis dropping that knee pad. Certifier out of the corner. Beef's down. 